so you don't have to tell me what it is but do any do any of you have a novel that you're kind of burning to oh my god that would be that would be my dream we can talk we can talk about what they are later because I have millions but um yeah do you think do you do you both feel well kind of not um do you all feel like yeah that adapting would be something that you would want to do then yeah I think that like my sort of dream prep well it's already being made so second series I really want a job on it but um uh, a Kind of Spark by L. McNichol or just any of L. McNichol's books because like really? they're just brilliant and I, I mean obviously working for TV would be great but I really see her latest book um, as a stage play as well I think that would be really oh, like a children's show yeah and like I just basically I wish I had her books when I was a kid because yeah they're brilliant yeah oh I'll have to that's really bad that I don't know those books <laughs> um, they're really really good like they're kids books but I love them yeah for what for what <laughs> age are they I think middle grade so I think okay. yeah so I literally just read it because everyone was saying like autistic representation I was like oh I'll just read it then because I'm a neurodivergent artist yeah. and then yeah I just yeah I really wish I had them when I was a kid like oh, they're brilliant yeah oh fantastic <laughs> Check them out. And um, Sean, do you want to share a book that you think um, that you would? Do you know what? Like, I think there definitely is books that I've read, and I'm like, wow, that works so well for TV. I think, like, I always talk myself out of it because I feel like I don't know where it's come from, but this stigma around adaptations that, like, you have to be at a certain point in your career to, in order to be able to even imagine that it's possible to adopt a novel I don't know where that's come from but that's just like yeah, so I, I wanted to come to yeah I, I would I, I would disagree with that I think I mean obviously that's you know it's I don't know lots of people have different ideas about things don't they it's the same thing that some people say about you know you shouldn't you shouldn't work in soap because then you're forever a soap writer that I've not found that either um well, that's really, forever, really I do, do forever want to be a soap writer <laughs> but just do other stuff as well but um, yeah. but I've not found that I've not found that people have kind of gone oh no because you do this you can't do this but I find with adaptations like you I find that maybe people are more likely to trust you mm. with, with your kind of lesser known in TV or you, you haven't done as much TV work because you're, you know, you've got an existing, you know, you've got an existing thing there, like hopefully yeah. by a writer who's not, you know, like a novelist who's known or, mm. um, yeah so I don't know I think yeah that's really interesting because like there was a book I read recently and I don't think I'm the right person to do it but I would love it to be turned into tv but it's called um Exit West have you heard of the novel Exit oh. West oh it's really good um it is it is being developed actually is it um, I thought it might yeah I mean oh so excited yeah. and then like there's power as well by um and that's already been I think when you say Exit been... West, are you talking about the Motion Hamid book? Yeah, that's the Exit West one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is a, like about it's and that's like magical realism, isn't it? And that's why I think like there's mag magical realism within it, and it's all about like Pakistan, Pakistani couple, um, that and like the, they open doors and it's like all magical, and you sort of step through, and then they but it's also like there's war. It's like water. They're going through um I like I'm not explaining it very well but yeah no I think that sounds really interesting I'm like oh yeah I, I read it a while ago and I was just like this is just going to be snapped up in an instant for TV. oh fantastic um, yeah. So, yeah that's the thing it's awful when you read something isn't it and you just know that you're already too late <laughs> you're like, oh. this is always the case because it's like yeah that's why I think this stigma around like yeah I read books and I'm like oh I just don't feel like I've got the means to be able to like I'm not at the point where I can be like yeah go for it like write it um because yeah but it's always worth like checking like you know if you oh oh oh, oh. <laughs> the internet <laughs> she'll be back oh no she's going yeah. back 
<laughs> but um, anyway, sorry, I will start. So um, yes, as you can tell, it's probably it's going to be fairly informal. So if you have a question, I've, I, I was going to say put your virtual hand up, but you can just like interrupt me because there's not many of us. Um, <laughs> so that's fine. Um, I'm just going to get, I've just gone through my whole thing and then I've realised I don't wear a mat now. Um, sorry, I just need to get to the beginning. Um, yes, so um, just a little bit about me first, even though I think it was on the website. Um, so I, my roots are in theatre, I did a lot of theatre. Um, Box Tricks produced my play, uh, Plastic Figurines, and um, toured it and um, then we had a run in London as well um, at the new diorama, which is amazing. And they've just been crazily supportive from the get go, really, because that that place started out as a um, a short, um, and then we developed it further, and um, so they've been great. Um, so yeah, I was in theatre for a long time. Well, I hope I still am in theatre, but um, <laughs> and then I um, started kind of doing a bit of TV stuff, kind of wrote a TV spec and everything, um, and then got a job on Corrie, which had been what I've been saying for years that I wanted, and it seemed like it wasn't going to happen, and then I was I was really lucky with that, it's, it's, a, it's lovely, like, it was what I really, really wanted, um, and it's great. Um, so I've been at Corrie for a I wrote this down because I was trying to work. for like seven years, I think now, seven and a bit years, so a long time now. Um, and other TV stuff I've done, I've done some kids stuff, I've done Mallory Towers, um, PJ Masks, if anybody has a three year old like I do, um, which is just a, um, a kid's superhero cartoon, which is brilliant. That's with Disney. I absolutely loved it. Um, really nice to kind of talk about, you know slime taking over a city and the kids having to just like I was saying like totally different to anything else I was doing um and then I've done a 90 minute um that was originally for the BBC um but then they rejected it um, so um but it, well no it was a really really good experience and now um I have a really lovely piece in that that has that a lot of people have read and that's nice to um to just have a have a sample and stuff like that anyway I'm kind of waffling about that um, so the two adaptations that I'm doing at the minute are um the um uh, number one um oh my god London's number one dog working agency um which I will keep referring to as Tales because we've changed the title to Tales of a London Dog Walker. So I just keep saying Tales. So if you get like, what the fuck is she on about saying Tales? It's that's what I'm talking about. Um, and then another one um, that um, I don't know how much I can talk about, but um, that's with Well Entertainment and Balloon. Um, so basically, I was just going to kind of start talking about that first. When you first read a novel that you either, well, the, well, I'm going to do it from kind of knowing that you're going to adapt that. So you know that this is the thing. So um, that book, um, London's number, number One Dog Walking Agency, was um, bought to, to me and I was kind of interviewing it. So I knew that I was going to be adapting it. So that first read was really just letting kind of the, the book kind of wash over me. I wasn't making notes. I, I made a real point of not stopping all the time and kind of going, oh, right, and trying not in my head to kind of break it down into episodes in my head until I'd read the whole thing and kind of knew where I was, where it was kind of going and what, what it was going to be and the tone of it and how I was left feeling at the end of it and all of that, really. And then on second read, um I what's lovely about that book is that it is broken down so much into kind of dog dog walker funny story of the week so you can see a kind of um oh that's a great episode or that's a great moment in an episode and that's it so it's really lovely like that my biggest kind of 
it wasn't worry, but my biggest thought about the book is that it's really warm and gentle and really, really funny. And it absolutely is the best version of, of what it is. But in terms of, so basically in the book, um, the protagonist, Kate, um, realises that the job that she's in just isn't, isn't for her. Um, so she quits and, and there's a, you know, there's a really funny, I'm making it sound, you know, there's really, really funny bits, but basically she quits her job and goes home and kind of talks to her boyfriend about it, has quite an adult conversation and, and, you know, that's, that's what happens. And, um, it's lovely and everybody, and you, you, uh, you love everybody straight away because she's very funny. But I think in terms of a series and thinking about, okay, well, where's my big hooky, first episode that makes everybody go oh I'll stay for five more of those thank you um it just wasn't there and so the the biggest thing for me at the beginning was kind of finding that right where are we with her um how do we give her agency as she has in the book because she chooses to quit her job she chooses to start dog walking but without it just seem like seeming like she has her life under control. So it was a lot about um, basically the first thing that I said when when I had the first meeting with it was like, I kind of want her to be, you know, rock bottom. I kind of want I want all of these things just thrown at her within the first five, ten minutes of that first episode. So I want her to lose her job. I want her to lose her partner or have an awful thing happen in her relationship. And again, I don't want to give her everything away to happen. But um basically yeah I think within seven seven minutes in and she's lost everything basically or everything's up in the air and she she isn't sure about it um so that was my kind of main thing about uh, that woman that we're going to spend a lot of time with I personally don't want to spend that time with somebody in this sort of tone of a show who's kind of very sorted out you know if, if you look at if you think a lot of, of those kind of main main characters that you love in series and stuff they're not you like they, they haven't got stuff sorted out they've got their they're down there and they've got to climb up and that's kind of what I wanted with Kate um so that was the kind of first thing that that we were able to kind of pin down that right okay this happens this happens this happens and she's on the floor and we need to get her back up and she needs to that needs to be her journey so then as you would with anything if if you were kind of just creating a complete original or you're doing an adaptation you're just looking at that journey well where do we want it to be you know by episode I think we were going to have eight and now we've got six um so where do we want her to be at episode six and we definitely don't want her to be sourced out because we want seven more series of it but you know where do we want her to get to and again in a in a novel generally unless it's you know lord of the rings everything's kind of wrapped up everything's tied up in a bow at the end of a novel and that's absolutely what you don't want for a series because you're just saying well yep that's all done and dusted i don't want you to commission me for another series basically so we needed to leave loads of things we it was that kind of balance of let's tie it up but loads of things need to be left you know it's kind of loosely tied and there's loads of threads that we can then go well if we we of course need a second season um so we then went through the book and um basically listed all of the um the big moments but also the smaller moments so the comedy stories of the dogs which is which is basically how the how the book is um and kind of picked our favorites really and discussed it and I think the interesting thing with that was that there were some things that we all said oh, we've got to have that we've got to have that and then because it was our favourite and then laced down the line actually we realised well we want it because we love it and it's funny but actually is it serving our story is it serving the tone of the series is it is it doing what it what what we need or do we just like it because it's really funny 
And so there were a lot of really difficult, yeah, decisions to make really that you kind of go, that's perfect and I love it. I mean, I suppose there's there's a nice thing to go, we haven't thrown anything away because what we've said is, well, that'll happen in series two, hopefully. It's got to be get series two. Um, so we then, we then anyway had this really lovely long list of just loads of just funny, sorry, sorry, my computer's gonna die. Um, I feel like I'm just talking at you, so obviously you can have a break for me while I plug everything in. Um, yes, so we then had this really lovely list of, of loads and loads of moments and stories that we could start kind of going, well, what's episode one about? What's the lesson? that she'll learn in episode one. And then what story of this list over here that we've got kind of could be woven into that and how, so that was really nice. It was almost like a little jigsaw at that point of kind of going, well, this is what we want that, the theme of that episode to be. And we're going to have this dog and that owner and this is going to be what she learns through that. And it, it, so it was just a really, it was really enjoyable. It, was, it wasn't easy, but it was a really nice thing to do, to create. It, it was, it, I think it was just a different way of, I think when you're just writing something, an original, something original, um, I kind of, well, as I think most people do, you start with that structure and you just kind of think about the structure of that and you, there's there are limitless ways that you could go and you know but actually having like these little kind of lists of things to just pull that down and pull that down that's it was just a nice I'm going to stop moving my hands now um that was just a really nice um and new way of of working for me so I really really uh enjoyed that um also there was the with with got that, a question for Beth Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, go for it. I haven't actually, I haven't read that book, but I've just Googled it now and then I am going to read it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so with like the jigsaw from me, there was a book very sort of like, oh, what's the word for it? Almost like standalone. But what I'm asking basically is, would that process be the same if it was like the book hinged of this happens and this happens and this happens yeah so you're juggling um that the the serial element of it so mm -hmm. yeah so we've got you know kate and what's happening in her life and and her relationship and um and all of that while yeah with that kind of um story of the week element so you're not always going to have that sometimes you are just going to have um and that that is something that with with this it was very obviously a kind of there's going to be there's going to be the serial element it's Kate all the time it's you know her partner all the time it's her best friend it's her mum it's all of these people and what's happening with them but we are gonna meet there are going to be returning dogs but we are going to meet a kind of a new a new dog every episode and a new owner every episode whereas the other um the kind of thriller who done it that I'm working on that less so you kind of got the I would say the the story of the week element is is still there it's still present because you're kind of going to have your suspect of the week I suppose we st I love how we still say of the week even though like, <laughs> we speak everything um but you know I mean uh, of yeah um but that's going to be a much more, well, it is a much more kind of serial, everything's, everything's carrying on. You've got your hooks and you've got your different suspects, but it's not, you're not necessarily meeting someone brand new every mm. time, every episode. Um, and generally, I mean, it's, a, I would say it's a decision to make. And the earlier you make it, the better, I think, because it's a, quite a nice feeling to have a, okay, so we've got our this, um, and have we got our lesson that 
that this person learns this week and have we got out so we've also got a, a thing where um Kate is like a force for good so she she helps people she um yeah she she helps people and in what way has she helped and sometimes those things are inter intertwined they're not necessarily like the three things that happen but it's just good to have that kind of that that tick off almost of like yeah we've got that um and I do because you are with any well in my experience with any book with any novel you are gonna be you're gonna have to choose things to keep you're going to have to choose things to change and alter and tweak. You're going to have to choose things that just don't fit. However brilliant they work in the novel, they just, we haven't got time now or we haven't. And sometimes you might even get, you know, to quite late and go, actually, shit, no, you know what? We need to bring that back because that was brilliant. And actually the thing that we're struggling to find here is because we threw that away early on. But now that episode or the series, it's evolved and we do want more about that. And what was interesting with us is that we um, we talked a lot about char characters' um, backstories, a lot about that. And in the book, um, there's, there's a, I can't remember if it is a lot actually, but it's, it's important mm -hmm. that um, Kate's parents went through a divorce um and it it's I think it was it's it seems like a messy divorce and I can't I don't think there is a hell of a lot of it in the book but you're very aware of it so it's kind of it doesn't there doesn't need to be a hell of a lot of it because whenever it is pepped in you go that's important and so we felt like we had this thing for Kate but we didn't have it for anybody else so we've we've tried to do that we talked a lot about well you know where are they one of the things that we was our kind of shorthand was like well are they are they the youngest child are they the oldest or are they the middle or are they an only child and it was really this kind of like well he's he's definitely an only child or he's definitely got a big family or and then it was like well what's the dynamics and that was really helpful for us and that came from I mean that came from a lot of things but it came from knowing that about Kate about what her family situation before we meet her was so we just wanted to have that for everybody um yeah so that was that was again something that we we wanted to think about with with everybody with all of those characters that even like the people that we don't know that well they, we we know if they're a middle child and we know if they've got a you know a twin who they absolutely despise nobody does. <laughs> but you know we know that about them but what was really interesting is that that was one of the things that we started to take for granted because we talked so much about it we'd made the de these decisions and we created these these interesting backstories for all of them we had our characters doing things that we weren't necessarily explaining yeah because we knew the answer so when we we got the 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 two writers um so i'm doing three episodes and then um we've got three of three of the writers doing an episode each and when we got the the two of the writers in um they were asking those questions that we kind of forgot it forgotten to be asking at the time because we so it's that was really helpful to have those fresher that fresher perspective actually because we've made those decisions um and I think I think that is true of every decision that you make um about whether you are having those stories of the week and if you are is everybody seeing those is everybody are those new are those fresher eyes seeing oh yeah so I can see a very clear pattern in each of your episodes because again, you might get far too close to that and you just go, yeah, it is, it is doing that. And you, you think it is, but maybe, maybe it's not. So I think, I don't know, basically that's a really long winded way of saying like, get other people to look at it and go. But I remember ages ago, I wrote, I wrote a play and I gave it to my husband to read. And um, he said, why, why doesn't he want to be in the living room with his dad? 
And I went, because his dad's a, a drunk and he's aggressive. And, and my husband just went, but that's not anywhere in the script. <laughs> Oh yeah. I mean, it was, but then I've like redrafted and like, it's now gone, but because I still knew that. So it's just, I mean, I suppose that's, that, that is true of anything, isn't it? It's not necessarily true of adapting. Um, so how do you decide then, Ella, what can be thrown out? Cause I think that's a harder decision perhaps to make than all the things that you want to include. And how do you ensure that what you choose to throw out doesn't affect that character's story arc or is it that you're rejigging the story arc from the from day one anyway because it's an adaptation that isn't so married to the book well I suppose it's been different with the two um the the, the two different books because one we have we have stayed very close to everything that happens all we've actually done is created so with the with the who done it what what we needed to do was create loads of red herrings so we didn't really need to throw out very much um the biggest thing that we threw out was um it is not it's not true of all novels at all because it's a massive generalization but often I de definitely with a lot of books that I read there's it's quite a gentle start you're introduced to people you're told about the neighborhood it looks really nice people are having dinner or whatever they're doing and I love that in a novel I absolutely bloody love it I want to spend you know if you think of something like um like Lord of the Flies like the description of the um the plane through the jungle and the the, all of that it takes forever basically but I mean I can't it's ages since I've seen the, have you ever read um, um, Titus Throne it's part of the Gormenghast no. trilogy no and the first I think it's Titus Throne I'm trying to remember which one of the three it is I'm pretty sure it's that one on. but literally the first 40 pages just describes the room that he <laughs> lives in and all that happens is a bat flies across the room but then it kind of works it works both ways with that because I've written a novel a book agent was like it's so fast the beginning of this novel is too fast mm -hmm. and it's because obviously in tv we're taught if you know if you've not hooked the audience by page 10 it's over yeah. for you so, yeah, that's you really are. interesting they said that it's too fast I love that but it's true yeah. isn't it so often and it's quite interesting since I've since I've been adapting and now when I read when I read any book or like I'm listening to stuff on audible I'm going well that'll all go and not because it's not brilliantly written and and absolutely hooked me when I'm reading you just need so with the whodunit it was we we were being introduced to people there was a a funny little you know a witty conversation to tell us who these people are and and all of this and then it was really quite far in before anybody dies and we just said no she needs to die straight away we need to come in she's getting ready to go out she steps outside she's killed and so it's literally probably 30 seconds in so the the difference when nobody speaks there's no dialogue I think she says oh hi or something and she probably doesn't say oh hi because it's 1940s but um, she says you know she just she's like oh whatever and then she's bloody dead you know no she says she says have you got a light that's what she says and so the, there was loads in in the beginning of that novel that is beautiful and actually a lot of that witty conversation we'll put later on it will be when we get to know those characters it'll be when they're you know they're traveling somewhere and they have a chat or whatever um so it is often about rejigging as well i think it's with both of the books there's nothing that i went well that does, that's never going to work there was nothing there that i went that that can't possibly be on screen. It's just not going to work. It's more about rejigging, I suppose. And 
really like, that potentially sort of playing with timelines as well like you know obviously in most books there tends to not really be so many kind of flashbacks or anything like that whereas you do do kind of see them on tv don't don't you so have you kind of played with sort of dual timelines or flashbacks or anything like that that weren't we have, originally in books we have with with the whodunit because absolutely that there's a bit in the book where um she one, one of the women runs up runs she walks into the house and her, her son runs up to her and gives her a big hug and then it basically it, the novel just goes off on her you know how lovely it is for her to hug her child because of the time that she spent in the mental institution and like you know and it's it's great it's really great she she missed him and it talks about how painful it was when she couldn't see him all the time and but obviously again you know you need to find a way so we we have got flashbacks to that absolutely because it it just but that in a way that's quite an obvious one that you just go well of course because unless you've got narration or unless she's going to have some really clunky dialogue going oh it's so nice to hug you because when i was when i was locked away i couldn't do this you know so it's nice to have just that visual and again you can do it in a few seconds really and see and understand exactly you know what what would be pages and pages in the book is kind of you know her hugging her son breathing him in and then a really quick flash to when she was when she was locked away and couldn't see him and and you've got it you've got everything you're in her head you know exactly what that's like for her um so you mentioned, you mentioned narration. I can imagine for a lot of people adapting a book, there is that temptation to kind of, because a book is narrated, mm -hmm. to kind of maybe employ a narrator, you know, in some shape or form with, with you know, the, the TV version of it. So how did you make the decision to, to not go in or to go in that direction or not go in that direction? You know what? I don't think we actually ever even discussed that really um i think it's interesting i think there are loads of things that, that does it really well and i think we talked about actually you know this um and we're not doing this now which is why i can talk about it but the um i think she only does it in the first season but the first season of sex in the city and carrie talks directly to the camera and when she actually and when she doesn't fucking need to as well it's like it's quite frustrating <laughs> like why are you like something happens and then she goes oh and you can tell by her face that she's mortified and then she goes oh i was mortified and it it's really quite clunky and I, i'm such a sex and city fan um but it really has kind of but we did talk about um talking to camera little glances to camera because obviously like something like Fleabag is absolutely amazing like so things work really well it's not a it's when you need them and when you don't and I think sometimes I think one of the reasons we didn't discuss having narration really is because often because generally you need it much less than you think you need it because actually if you've got if you've got good actors who can you know you don't need a you know he was scared about that I know I'm being really clunky with that but do you know what I mean you don't you don't need it so I don't I think yeah we didn't really talk about it I can see why because sometimes when something is written so beautifully as well in a novel you want to you want to preserve that you want that to be heard um yeah maybe one day i'll do an adaptation of narration but yeah yeah we didn't really but i can see why that would definitely be like something that people would want to do um yeah um oh, just seeing where i'm at i just go off on tangent then i'm like well, i should probably find my way back um Okay, sorry, does anybody have any more questions? Um, 
I had one, um, Ella, but I'm, you might talk about this throughout the That's workshop, okay. but um, I wondered like when you're working with the actual author of the book, like how much are they in the writer's room and like how much do they are they present and what uh, is there a significant moment or has there been in these two that you're working on where the author was like right see you later have fun <laughs> or is it well, like very yeah 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 I mean yeah I I, I do talk about it but I can talk about it now um yeah so with um Kate her name is Kate because it's her memoir um Kate has been absolutely amazing I think um she's been really supportive of it all it is terrifying um if that generally um well in my experience with both of them the novelist hasn't been in the writer's room or in the storylining sessions um at all really with the um with the thriller I haven't spoken to the writer at all but I know um that the producer has and there's there's a really close and I know also that a lot of the any changes any significant changes that we are making have made has have gone have gone to him to be so he's absolutely on it with Kate um it's a bit less it's been less so like we're making this change is that okay um but she has read she's definitely read episode one and two um because they're completely kind of signed off um and she really liked them it was but it was it was scary it was really scary because there are changes there and they're they absolutely aren't changes because they're they're better than the book it's because it worked better for the so we we really want this um this kind of rom-com element to it basically mm -hmm. and in the novel she's happily she's got a lovely boyfriend who is mature and lovely and supportive and again in the novel that's a joy to read in a series boring <laughs> what yeah it's just like okay and it's lovely and it's just it is the di that difference really um so that was probably the biggest change that I was no I wasn't nervous about it because she's fantastic but I thought oh god I hope she likes it like like you do with everybody but you know it is it is there it's their baby before it's your baby you know and you're kind of yeah I suppose you've got to see it as two separate things really that it doesn't whatever we do with the series it doesn't change the book the book is still the book and yeah. brilliant and hopefully the series is going to be brilliant as well but um no in the, in in both cases they haven't been in the storyline sessions um but with Kate especially she's been really available to talk to whenever we would want to so that's been really good and did um just very quickly a little add-on that I thought of when you were talking through it um did you like was it an approach did you approach the authors or was it did it happen in different ways like how does it what's that beginning stage where you read a book and you're like this would make an amazing um, and I, I guess the producer sometimes does that, right? It's not always the yeah. So, well, in in the in the case of the two that I'm doing at the minute, they were both my agent put me forward for them. I interviewed for them, um, so that was quite straightforward. In that sort of, I I didn't have to find out if the rights were available. But I'm also working with two two other companies at the minute who have said, are there any books that you want to adapt and we mm. will find out so I'm also doing that really really early stages but there is a book that I've read that I really want to so and it's available and we're like okay so really really early stages so that's what I'm also doing that at the minute and that just came from somebody getting an advanced copy of it and saying they really enjoyed it and then me saying oh can I get an advanced copy of it please and my agent getting me one and me reading it and just going it's ace 
and and it's it's a really really good book it's really really good but I was also able to go and it would make a really good series there are plenty of you know I think I would probably say like all my favorite you know like one of my favorite books is Poisonwood Bible I don't want to adapt it thank you <laughs> you know like I don't even know it hasn't been has it I'm quite surprised that it hasn't been actually but I have no desire to do that it would be a monumental thing to do um even though I'll read it over and over and over again um so yeah I think with I think there's other books that you see that with as well books where the rights have been bought like I don't know if any mm. of you ever have ever read the book A Little Life oh. yeah on the list I haven't read it yet like like on the list. it's unreal it's it's kind of a bit of a doorstopper of a book um a little life and it's about these four male friends kind of growing up in new york and all their like trials relations and it's a really tough read like every time i picked it up i was in tears um and the rights were bought for it like i want to say in like 2017 or something and to, to adapt it into i think a tv series and it's just sat there like it's it's not happened and I can only guess that's just because it's been too challenging to adapt so but then far. things do take a long long time don't they because and this is not a book like that at all but um the the Radleys by Matt Haig has mm. just he I read that years ago and I remember when I read it on the back cover it said that it had been bought by a I can't remember who it was, but it said, and is going to be made into a um, a film, I think it was. I don't think it was a series. And then he's literally just said on his Instagram that it's happening now. And I read that so long ago. And I'm like, that's, that ha that must have been, they haven't been working on it that whole time. They haven't been, you know, that's been sat there for a long, old time. And then they, so, I mean, yeah, things just take take forever and even even with with tales like you know it's been it's been very kind of like oh my god now 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 gotta do it gotta do it and then there's like now we're a bit of a lull where we're like kind of like oh well kind of all the episodes done now and like you know let's let's do it sort of thing so yeah so so when does it actually <laughs> when does Tales go into production? Have you written all the episodes? Has have all the episodes been writ written and Yeah, but it, it it's it's changing all the time. So we still yeah, we still don't know. So that's been a bit um just just kind of not knowing. It's been it's been just not knowing when. That's not always but I suppose as my job is to just write the the best scripts that I can whereas it's so hard to not let that kind of that not necessarily knowing or knowing when or it's so hard to not let it impact your creativity but it's it's not helpful to to kind of worry so I have stopped worrying <laughs> I mean I don't think that's true but um I've tried to stop worrying um and hopefully yeah that will be good. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. I really want to watch it now. I want to oh God! Really want to yes, it. yes. Uh, although, like all my dreams of this new script I'm working on, I'm like, God damn it! <laughs> oh no! no, no. Uh, but it's brilliant, and it's like you know, it's already happening. Like, that's exciting. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. Oh, are you allowed to say who, who, where it is going to be, so we can keep an eye out? Or are you not allowed to say? Yeah, I think. Well, it's. I think because Epics, Epics have announced that they're developing it, so I'm allowed to say they're developing it because they've announced that. So, oh yeah. great, but, okay, cool. yeah. 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 Totally right. feel... Recorded. <laughs> no one will watch me. It's fine. No one googles me. Um, <laughs> obviously, people will watch it on the Box Tricks website, as you should. Sorry. <laughs> because they're brilliant um yes sorry because I feel like I've jumped around a little bit now um because I've talked all about the 
story of the week and stuff. Um, yeah, so just kind of going back to the, if you're, if, obviously, if, if a book is bought to you, or, you know, that, that and that's also that, then that's going to be dictated to you how many episodes that is. But if you're pitching uh, to, uh, to somebody to say, you know, let's do this book, um, there are some quite boring but very important kind of decisions that you've got to make, even if they then change. So if you think this is 12 episodes because it's, huge you know and it feels really big to you then put that in in your pitch you know even though all of these things will change and eventually you won't probably be the one to actually dictate that early on you want to be saying what well, I think this is eight episodes and the reason I think it's eight episodes is because I've mapped out that I've got eight hooks here um and they you know obviously the tone of it and um will decide your kind of your 30 minute or your 60 minute but you're breaking that down and you might have the novel there and you go oh there's an absolutely banging hook there for the first the first episode actually absolutely brilliant god got such cliffhanger there we're gonna you know gonna propel us into the series and then you'll be reading and then you'll be like oh actually there isn't another one until if I'm working it out like that, if I'm literally chopping it up, that's not till episode four. So that's when you're, which is what we found with the other book. It, it's quite pacey, but in terms of the, oh my God, moments, and especially you need that with a whodunit, you need to end every single episode with like, it must be that person. Oh my goodness, it's not that person. It's that person. You need that every single time. And the book has that a few times because it's got plenty of other stuff going on like you know she hugs her son and she remembers her time when she was locked away but because on screen that's going to take us yeah 10 seconds we needed to create so we created a lot of of red herrings with that so I suppose it's kind of easier to talk about in a kind of um that hookiness um with a thriller with a with a whodunit really because you know you know you kind of know that structure um but you know if it is a drama like what is you still need those hooks with whatever it is you still need you know if it's a comedy you still you still need a reason to to be coming back to be going well what is going to happen with that um so yeah it's then adding in and finding if there are moments in it that can be made bigger so um there's a moment in the um the thriller that um one of the guys who we suspect he he goes and like threatens somebody and he just like smacks him about a bit and scares him but that's that's not a hook for you that he goes you you stop investigating me okay and then it's like and in the book it works really well again but it, you know you're not going to end an episode with that so we kept we kept that but we kept who it was doing it from the audience we've made the the kind of fight much worse so they find the guy unconscious and then it's who's done it and and at that point they kind of go well is it the same person that you know that killed the woman before and so it isn't necessarily that we've created that out of thin air it's just making a bigger point of of something that's already there in the novel just making that bigger I suppose um oh oh no sorry um yeah so just figuring out like what your what your hooks are for every episode really and if you're trying if you decide early on I've got this is oh this is such a monumental book it's definitely 12 episodes and then you're really really struggling to get those hooks then try it with eight because then it it's going to rattle through and be brilliant and pacey and there's not going to be lulls in it because I'd much rather watch a really short series that just was like bam 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 
than you know something that oh oh that was an enjoyable letter don't really know what what changed though what how has my perspective changed or what have I learned there even though I did enjoy spending time with those people what what what's new for me from that um yeah. Ella just a quick question on that like how because I think you touched on it before but you know like the difference between like a who done it obviously like you've said and touched on it really needs it in order to drive the story forward but like when it's episodic and it's really like each episode is dedicated to a different character like do you mm. see it more that we're not going to meet those characters again in episode like if we meet we introduce characters um in episode two we're never going to see them characters again in episode four do you have to be like I I can recognize this in myself of like I don't want to make the watcher love them characters so much that they are going to want them to be coming back up again like does that is that well, ever that you feel well that we have it because because we've talked so much about so you know we've got the dogs coming in but we've got the dog owners and we want the comedy like with that we want the comedy of those people and i i think you do want your audience to really love them and actually I don't think there's anything wrong with them saying oh I'd love to see them again because all you've done <laughs> I think you've done your job then of creating these brilliant characters and you know unless they die there's no reason why not in real life <laughs> like the show unless you <laughs> kill them off in the in their one episode um there's no reason why maybe they can't come back so we've got people who you know we might see a little glimpse of or we might see one of them or if somebody's got you know a crappy relationship that you see then and later down the line you only see one of them and then mm. you know and so while they are they can be serving their purpose to what your main person is doing and what they learn in that episode or whatever I think you do want to make them very lovable and I think there's nothing wrong with saying, oh, my God, I want to see them again. And There might be a spin-off for some of the characters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <don't. laughs> but, you know, I think I, I think it's I think you, you, that's only a good thing. I don't think you're disappointing people if they go, oh, my God, they were hilarious, weren't they? Or they were so evil. I just want to see them again and you don't bring them back I suppose in terms of their story you want to be tying stuff up in in the episode but then I suppose if you weren't doing that then either you would see them again or you wouldn't be doing your job so why are they there so it's it's kind of I suppose it's always asking why they're there and what what purpose they are serving and I think that's it that can also be a lovely you know and I know it's a comedy but like in Motherland that you see her mum in every episode and that she says unbelievable to her mum in every episode and it's joyous it's absolutely it's brilliant because you're waiting for it and that's really nice I don't think you can do that anything else other than comedy can you but it's lovely it's really really lovely and actually maybe that is something to experiment with like you know I'm sure you can I'm sure that I'm sure there are I don't know them but I'm sure there are other genres that do do that similar sort of well what is you know that that lovely moment that you get or so yeah I think you want to love not love everybody but you want to love watching everybody even if they're there for 10 seconds I would say thank you yeah I agree <laughs> um god you're gonna have to ask me more questions i feel like i've talked to you about everything now i do actually have sort of like jumping back to you for right and stuff um when you have like a book which has already been adapt like not like shakespeare or jane austen or something but if you have like the only example i can think of right now is the time traveler's wife yeah. which that film was like not too long ago and they've just made tv so how does that work like when are the rights sort of up for grabs again really if they are like i don't 
I don't know. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know. I would imagine that the rights aren't up for grabs again. Yeah. That there's that there would. Ha I would. I don't know, Carla. Do you do you know more about that? Like, no, I would I imagine it that there's still there would be an ownership and something with who who made the film. Um, I, I I think I don't know. But like my brother was talking to me about all the the different like with um some of the Marvel films you can get on Disney, but some you can't and all of this. And I'm like, oh my God, it's so complicated. So yeah, my short answer is that I'm not sure actually. That's bad. I did go up for a job on a TV series at the beginning of the year that was an adaptation of a film that had been uh, I think it came out in like 1998 or something like that forever ago and so their plan was to kind of modernize it but but stay relatively true to the film within the context of it becoming a tv series and it was a big american production company that had teamed up with this tiny uh german company because this tiny german company owned the rights to the original film so it became Came this thing of like we're developing this together um yeah so maybe 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 that's how it works a lot of the time maybe you know if it's if it's for example like a big company like warner brothers who have a surprising amount of subsidiaries underneath them you know companies like wall to wall who you know when i signed my waterley road contract it's a warner brothers contract and it's oh like my God. It was, yeah it's really bizarre um so you know warner brothers might own the ip for something that came out forever ago and then you know wall to wall might do a reboot of it and you're like oh how come how did wall to wall get to do a reboot of this well because warner brothers own wall to wall so so i think it's quite sort of like political in that way um yeah i hope hopefully that comes some way to answer your question no that makes yeah that that makes sense and yeah, it's like IP nepotism in a way. Like, <laughs> yeah, but it's quite interesting because yeah. I think like big sprawling kind of companies like Warner Brothers will kind of buy up loads of IP mm -hmm. and sometimes buy IP from other big companies as well and then just kind of sit on it for ages until they feel yeah, like. Yeah, I've they, heard that. Like, yeah. You know, tells them it's the right time to kind of because you'll have noticed that over the last sort of year or so maybe two years particularly since the pandemic um there's been loads of reboots of loads of things because you know nostalgia is really in these days isn't it and so you know you'll have seen that there's been a wonder years reboot and a fresh prince you know you know bel-air reboot and loads of little things and i think a lot of that is just because the original company like paramount or warner brothers or disney has owned that ip for a really long time or they've merged with a company that does own that ip and so yeah would you say there's like a really quick way of like checking if a book has been taken already <laughs> or is that just like not possible Gen well, I just have you guys got agents or no, that's another thing that I was gonna ask about in that like agents would be able to tell you that. Well, we'll be able to do that work for you, wouldn't they? But yeah, I mean my agent one. check just checks for me. Yeah, I I wouldn't know. But well, no, that's not necessarily true. My agent does check for me if it's something that I've just said, oh and so that that one that I wanted an advanced copy of, I was like, one, we find out if the rights are available and to get me a copy of it if you can and she actually said oh it's it's unlikely that they they will and then they did actually which was really great um it's really unexpected and lovely um but actually both the companies who have said to me tell me books that you want to adapt they they would check they can easily check so i could have just as easily said to them oh there's this book that I'm interested in can you can you check and they would so I think if you're talking to a production company and saying for me I ask my agent because I think well I don't want to keep going to the production company like what about this one what about this one but actually 
one one of the guys I was talking to was kind of like, just give me a list. Just give me a list of novels that you like that you would like to you know and so I gave her about five and said you know what do you think about any of these and um she checked and then the ones that were available she read or she read a, a portion of and kind of was able to say yes or no quite quickly on the ones that she thought were right or whatever so um I think if you're talking to to a production company like they will they will check for you and I think it generally it's not it shouldn't take too long really for them to do that another good way of, of found finding out and this isn't completely fool, foolproof because it will only have the things that are definitely have definitely been bought up and not necessarily all the things that have definitely been bought up but sometimes i will um put into imdb pro if you've got imdb pro um, like the name of a book that I really like, just to see whether somebody's already optioned it. That's and good, yeah. sometimes you will see that come up straight away um, with the same title and you're like, okay, that's gone. But there will be some times mm -hmm. where you might put that in and it doesn't come up, but that doesn't necessarily mean it hasn't been bought up. That's it, yeah. It's like, because yeah. so when you really understand the background of how, and like we said, it takes so long for something that might have got accepted like years ago, and you're like, mm. oh, how do you? It's like knowing those background conversations, isn't it? Yeah. But, but yeah, the production companies is, is always the place to start, isn't it? When you've got ideas and you've got spec scripts and all of that. So. Definitely. And it is remembering as well that they are, you know, if they're, if they're working with you, they're wanting to find something as much as you're wanting to find something. So it's not that you're, because, um, and I'm saying this because I tend to feel like this, like, oh God, am I, am I bombarding people with like, what about this one? Or what about this one? But it's like, but no, they're wanting to find that fantastic next mm. series you know that you know that that book that no one's snapped up yet they are wanting to find that as much as so if you're reading and you know it is frustrating I read I read something and um I think it was literally like I was like halfway through it thinking god this would make a really good series and then and it's like a brand new book but obviously that's why with this other thing I've asked for an advanced copy because I'm like well they're already snapped up when they're on the shelves it's really annoying when you say advanced copy Ella, i'm just being really stupid i think like do you mean like when it's the book the book hasn't actually hit the shelves yet yeah yeah so my agent just asked um if i yeah. contacted um their agent and said could i ever and but off i think often people would say well no <laughs> you can't yeah but um, so you knew of that story so the story had been promoted, but it hadn't hit the shelves. Yet. It hadn't been promoted. It was a writer that I follow on Instagram got an advanced copy and said, oh, I'm really excited to read this. Oh. Um, and then I Googled it and then I got like a synopsis, synopsis of it and thought, oh, that sounds really good. And then asked. Wow, right, okay, yeah. So it's just being like, seeing something, isn't it? And yeah, it is, it, really it is. Quick. But also, the thing is with her, because I know that she gets a lot of, she's always, she reads loads and loads of novels. She's, she's a novelist, she reads loads and loads of novels. Um, and she's constantly saying, this is the one I'm reading at the minute. Oh, I really enjoyed it. It's going to be out, blah, blah, blah. So I know to kind of look out for her recommendations because I think we have a similar taste and... That's cool. Yeah. One other thing that I was just sorry, I feel like I'm I'm, I'm bombarding you with like no, <laughs> do do. I've thing. said all, I've said all my stuff, so <laughs> I've said all my slides um, anyway. So feel free to ask this, questions. It, it might not be a thing, but um, when we're thinking, because I'm I'm putting a like document together at the minute of loads of indies and production companies like in the across the north, and I've like got quite a few now to like on my list. But I just wondered if um you had any that you knew that actually really loved to make adaptations like is there is that a, a thing or like is it just more about the project by project I think, think it is I I think it is from my experience anyway I think it is project by project there doesn't seem to be anybody that I'm necessarily working with um, obviously Watford and Essex are, are a fairly new company even though they've got loads um happening um oh, sorry <laughs> um and 
so there are there are a lot of like um they're not called Sarah but it's Brock Brock Media isn't it Brock Media seem hmm. to be doing loads I feel <coughs> like they've got they've got loads of loads of things in the mix haven't they and then lo things that they've already done and I feel like all of that I could be wrong but I feel like well the majority of theirs are adaptations so mm. I would say they're really they're really friend good to like is. look at what they've sorry go. yeah I've got a friend who's who's um had a show optioned with them and it is an original uh drama that oh, he okay. has written he's he's actually in the succession room at the moment and he says that the um oh yes i know who you mean i've forgotten his name he's jamie. from liverpool isn't he wait the yeah. jamie carragher jamie carragher yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and he says they're great but i mean i was i was thinking what what you often find with some of these kind of new production companies and i don't know whether this is the case for brock is that if they've not got loads of money or if they have got loads of money then that kind of really depends on how many originals they're doing and how many yeah. book options that they're doing do you know what i mean it really yeah it depends on kind of like what their financial situation is i think a lot of the time because of um, the rights that you need to get is that right yeah but i would say that every production company that i've ever had a general with has asked me about like we've had a conversation about books and you know, yeah. books i would be or you know sometimes i'll do generals and be like you know have you got any ip in the vault or any books that you need that you're thinking of adapting that you want writers to um be attached to and um and there, there, there's there's almost always like a conversation around whether i have anything any books that i'm interested in bringing to the table so i right. think i think pretty much every production company does adaptations and i haven't necessarily found any that haven't so far or any that seem more interested in you know and i think even if they haven't i agree with you that most people will ask so it's always good in those meetings to have like a little little list ready isn't it because i've and i say that because i've been in that position plenty of times when i haven't and i've gone oh um and my mind's gone completely blank and it's like i've never read anything in my life um <laughs> but i i I'd be really surprised by any company who just went, oh, no, we wouldn't do it. Even if you bought it, even if they didn't bring it up, if you if you brought it to the table, they said, oh, no, we, we don't do that. I think, yeah. I think so. uh, but it is worth like, thinking about why you would be the right person to adapt that book as well, because that needs to be part of the conversation yeah. that you have with that production company. So, you know, if Exit West wasn't already in um, development, yeah. then you know you'd have to make a really amazing case for why you'd be the right person to <laughs> yeah so like, straight would, away that is a one i'd pitch <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so it's about kind of like you know if you if you for example had stumbled across tales before ella had then you but know it wasn't you, it wasn't me it was watford <laughs> so it was, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah it totally, but totally. You know what i mean like if I think ella, that is the thing if there's yeah if there's something that's a bit more totally a bit more obscure and and again it's it's about you know because you're going to be the one writing that as well so again it isn't necessarily although i think well all all the things that i've looked at to adapt to everything i love them as as novels but it isn't always the most beautifully written and actually often it's not the most beautifully written thing because that doesn't necessarily translate as mm -hmm. we're saying, you know, you've got a, a really slow, beautiful, you know, and it's the novel is full of, you know, description, absolutely stunningly detailed description. I love books like that, but I'm not going to adapt them because mm -hmm. it's just not. So, yeah, but finding maybe something that's a bit more like, oh, that's that's quite plotty, but it's a bit mad or maybe or I don't necessarily love that style of writing, but it's as a series that's going to be your your style of writing so you're just stealing the story you know, that's terrible thing to say <laughs> but yeah really helpful yeah oh, i hope so i feel like i've waffled a little bit um cool. any other questions
<laughs> did you say i know this isn't um but did you say that you wanted to ask something about an agent or um, oh i was just i was just interested in like how that i mean it's not necessarily about adaptation but i was just interested when you were saying that um your agent would then like check it, it, it you've already covered it it was just like how okay. you go about like working out yeah. when books are available and um yeah. also my agent is um um handles a lot of rights for books as well though oh, so i think handled. i'm quite lucky like i i i think that's why she's able to put me forward for a lot of a lot of adaptations because i've had other interviews as well where i haven't got it but that i've been put forward for it and that's because she knows that 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 you know that people are looking for that or that it's been bought yeah. so so that's yeah. really hard because it's like i'm at the stage now where i like i need I, I i really want to find an agent and i'm like trying to get those meetings in and it, it's always that like yeah it's the beginnings of it but it's like that's a whole we could do a whole workshop i'm sure on oh things. absolutely well the thing is you could do a whole workshop or you could also say it's just really hard just keep doing it like yeah. you know and, and the way i'm not i'm not um making you know making it as if it is if it's nothing but i just you know I, if I, sometimes if I search for an email in my emails and it will come up and I'll look at that time when I was messaging agents and honestly it's like so many emails that I sent and I think at the time when I was doing it I didn't realize because I wasn't just sat there you know hour after hour just emailing emailing <laughs> but you know it, they're all very close together and there's a lot of you know and then if you look at when when you got replies it's a long old time after <laughs> if you get replies at all so it is it and that's not to say you know it won't happen it will it it will and it is but it's you just got to keep going hi yeah i'm here i'm, I'm really good sure <laughs> read my stuff make sure that you have a really strong spec script and yeah. then another really strong spec script is what you <laughs> and then another because <laughs> well, really yeah because i remember my first agent saying to me um you can absolutely send if you want to get into tv you can absolutely send a theater sample mm. but if they like it they're going to come back and say if you've got a tv sample yeah and if you yeah. haven't got one you're then losing that momentum yeah. so even if you're like okay my strong i want to send them one i'm going to send them one bit of work and i think my strongest strongest thing is my theater piece by all means send that but if they're going to get back to you you want to be able to say that same bloody date yep here you go there's yeah, my TV script yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, really good advice. Thank you. Yeah. Who like did you get the eight? Sorry, Ella, I'm just thinking, did you get your agent like at the time just before Cory? Or did you did they coincide or was it like no, it was it I got my agent quite a while ago and I was a little bit lucky in that they um she was at an agency that accepted unsolicited material right because that's another thing isn't it <laughs> absolutely cool. and i had a play on in london at the time so i emailed about oh god i just emailed bloody everybody but um i emailed a lot of agents and not many people got back to me and she was amazing and said um i'd love to come and see your play and i'd love love to meet with you and then she rang me and said oh i've been i've i've been headhunted or whatever it's called and um, by another agency and so i'm just waiting for her to go okay so you're not going to meet me then because you know and she was like but i'm still going to meet you so i it, it, I was I was a bit jammy in that little because she was at one place and then she moved and and that was quite lucky and then and then she went off somewhere else and then I got <laughs> other agent who's at the same agency she's wonderful um and my previous agent was wonderful as well but I think I think it is kind of contacting people um looking at who they have and like I know you probably yeah know this and everything but looking at who they have on their books already and yeah yeah just keep going <laughs> yeah but it's not a quick I just 
it's just not everything takes forever <laughs> yeah it is I'm, and a friend of mine at the minute is saying like you know I'm I'm doing this this and this I'm doing some really exciting things and I'm messaging agents and I'm not getting anything back and and you just like okay but they're just really busy it's not a personal thing but that's yeah. really hard not to take them sorry I'm just waffling now but you do you know what I mean it is difficult kind of but also like you want an agent who is fairly responsive um yeah you know I, I, and so it is worth kind of like keeping on keeping on until you get someone who seems quite responsive from the off um i've got four agents for different things so i have a wow. theater film and tv agent an acting agent a book agent and a voice agent and like i was saying like some of them it, it took a long time to, to to get them because you know i was sending out and sending out and sending out but all four of my current agents got back to me within a couple of days of me first sending out to them wow and, really yeah 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 so i was i i was with curtis brown for five years with my previous agents for theater film and tv for five years and it took a while to get them um, and it was kind of like a, a triple pincer movement from the production company that I was working with, um, a friend who had a tenuous link to them, and also just me emailing them. And it took them a really long time to read my script. And actually, it was quite indicative of how they were during the five years that, that I was with them. And I left them in November last year, and it's the greatest decision I've ever made. But I sent, mm. before I left them, I sent out to, I think, three or four different agents and um jonathan my current agent got back to me within about i don't think it was even a day and then read mm -hmm. like my work within a couple of days and really like all of the things that i'd sent him within a couple of days and okay. he is like incredibly responsive you know with my book agent um i'd almost given up i'd emailed 33 agent by that point and the majority of them i hadn't heard anything from at all um and then i woke up one morning and there was an article in my news feed about a woman who'd been rejected i think it was like 49 times and then she'd finally got an agent and landed like a six-figure book deal and and i was like oh well i suppose i should email a few more then <laughs> And I used to work at Radio 1 and um, Annie Mack, who I'd worked with while I'd been at Radio 1, had had a book coming out. And I was like, I wonder who her book agent is. So I sent out 20 more agents and the 36th email that I sent was her book agent. And I must have sent it at about three o'clock in the afternoon. And then the following morning I woke up and he'd read my first three chapters to his wife over breakfast and was like, I want to have a meeting with you and um, within about 24 hours after that i had a book agent oh that's so, amazing i love that story flipping out mm. my acting agent and my voice agent and so, you know you'll definitely while you're kind of on your agent hunt you'll you'll set your heart on certain agents and be like i really want to be signed to this agent and mm. it'll take kind of like multiple e emails and then every now and again then they'll kind of get back in touch and go oh yeah no i will read your stuff eventually and da, 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 da. you don't want that agent yeah you don't want that because agent. you want to i do remember somebody saying to me um it's like a marriage like your relationship with you and i remember because at the time i didn't have an agent and i was desperate for an agent and i was like i just want i just want an agent mate and i was <laughs> talking and i really really did and i was talking with with this agent and every time and obviously i live in liverpool so i was going down to london on the bloody mega bus because i literally had no money going down and having meeting after meeting and i remember saying to my husband and i would all i would like see his parents living in london i'd always say to them as well i'd be like I might come back here today and I might have an agent by the end of the day and then I get back after that meeting and then have told me all the things this person told me all the things that I should be doing and the, and I wasn't doing them so once I'd done this 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 then they, then and and I was like well this is how it must work and mm. and I would come back absolutely just Oh, just feeling like crap every time I'm not doing it right and you know I've not done the right things and and they would you know my husband would say to me like but the thing is 
to get that when she's saying, well, you need this big commission or you need this big, to get that, that's why you want her to help you. Yes, yeah, this is it, isn't her. it? But yeah. I just thought, oh, that's how it must work. And then when I met with Lindsay, who was my first agent, who then um, uh, went to a, um, she's an LA agency, I think now. Anyway, she's lovely. Mm -hmm. um, I met with her and she was just like, and I remember her saying, I don't know who else you're talking to, but go with me. I'm better. Like that. <laughs> and I was like, I love you. And she'd read, she'd read my work and she got it. And she was like, God, it's mad. And it's this. And, and then she kept saying about how, Oh God, the, the, this, this that you've written, it doesn't fit with who you are. I'm really surprised that you're like this when your work writing's like this yeah. and that's really exciting because you could, and she was just lovely. And I thought, Oh, this is nice. And she took me for lunch as well. Like, yeah. That's what it's meant to be like, she, isn't she, it? When she treated me like we were going to be moving forward as equals, not, mm. well, you need to do this, this, this to be good enough for me to represent yeah. you. Because ultimately, they believe in you and they believe in your talent or they don't. And they yeah. should be able to tell from a couple of spec scripts whether or not they want to work with you or not, whether, yeah. whether or not you have a unique and original voice that's exciting to them. And they shouldn't be asking you to jump through a load of hoops just no. to prove that. And also, because especially if those really hoops are well. things you might not want to do as well. Like, mm. they might, you know, sending you off in a direction. And, you know, I had I had a thing fairly, well, um, a while ago now, actually, um, where um my agent she'd had to she'd had to um she'd been back and forth with this contract had been quite complicated <laughs> and um and then we got to a point where she you know it'd been really quite complicated and I said oh I just don't think it's gonna work I don't think we should do it and, and I was really nervous about saying that to her and she was just like if you're not feeling it hello you're not feeling it like it's absolutely fine she was so supportive and mm. I was so nervous about saying that to her not because she'd showed any reason for me to be nervous but just because I thought god but she's put her time in here and you know and she was like if you're feeling that that's not right for you then that's so that's okay like that's totally yeah. fine because they want you know I sometimes I talk about my agent and sometimes I'm like oh my god it's like it's like she's my bloody like therapist as well <laughs> like oh well I feel like this and da, da, da. I rang her when I was going to I was going to a premiere my first one well, my first and only premiere that I went to the other week <laughs> and I rang her before going how dressed up are people because I'm worried I'm too overdressed now <laughs> and she was like oh fine Ella and I rang her at like I don't know it's probably about seven o'clock she's not in the office anymore so yeah you kind of it's lovely to really they're so important in your life yeah. and if you can be really honest with them about I'm loving working with this person I'm hating working with this person it's it's great it, you want to be yeah. able to be honest with them yeah and you want yeah. to be able to trust them because yeah. ultimately they work for you not the other way mm -hmm. around they yeah. work for you and if they're managing things like contracts and relationships on your behalf, you need to be able to trust them. But yeah, like equally, I mean, God, about five or six months ago, I hit a real low point in my career and I phoned up my agent and ended up crying down at him. And I was like distraught and he properly talked me down off a ledge because I was thinking of quitting and throwing in the towel on everything and he was completely there for me and talked talk me down off that ledge and since then he's got me two massive jobs and, and you know that I could never have done with my previous agents of five years not in a, mm -hmm. not in a million years like I was like I felt worried or nervous about emailing them or calling them and mm -hmm. you know nine times out of ten I'd wonder whether I'm going to get a reply to an email that I sent them mm -hmm. and that you do not want I learned no. that lesson very much the hard yeah. way and I wasted a lot of time doing that so yeah biggest mm -hmm. bit of advice is just make sure you really connect with them you really feel comfortable with them yeah. and that might not be an agent who's from the biggest agency in the country you know who's yeah. And, and I hear that a lot like I hear it so oh, yeah, much definitely, yeah. like it's the bigger ones that is quite is you don't have that intimate connection with or you don't have you're not able to so it's it's yeah. really useful like hearing this thank you so much for like sharing because it's just so useful yeah good
right it's also well, this whole workshop has got rid of that stigma you know I came in thinking like I'm not you've got to be at a certain point in your career to write an adaptation no, no I don't you think at all no. and I would also say just just on agents as well I would just also say that there are a lot of writers I know some who I'm working at Corrie with others who are doing other things who don't have agents as well for me personally I like that I have I have one I she gets she gets me work um and my biggest thing is that I know that I could never um negotiate um uh, money I can't do that I I know that about myself I accept it that I cannot <laughs> I feel embarrassed to be like you know if anybody met I'm like oh no it's fine I'll just do everything for free I won't yeah. if anybody's watching this I will not <laughs> <laughs> but, but she I love that she does that but I do know people who don't have agents and are able to do that for themselves and yeah. it hasn't it hasn't stopped them doing really well as well so all I'm saying I suppose is if it takes a bit of time it doesn't mean that that time is some standing still time yeah that, that's, that's, that's really yeah it's like I'm working in a writer's room at the minute and that all female writer's room and then um, and that some of them some of us got agents some of us haven't and it's this constant conversation that we're having around like agent no agent like and it is just so different depending on what you want as a writer and and the kind of support so it it's just yeah it's really um interesting to just hear like the different experiences that people go through like right you know from the beginning of looking to where they are now and it's a bit trial and error is what I'm getting as well a little bit from you know you might have to get through an agent that's not like you were saying Carla you know and then sort of a yeah, a dating, a speed dating. Yeah, <laughs> that's and what you should do. Want a writer, an agent that is um, happy to watch you develop in whatever direction you develop, um, and because that was another stumbling block with my previous agents, is that I kind of said to them towards the end, like, I want to write comedy, and I've 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 written this comedy drama that I'm really excited about, and they were like, oh. Well, if you told us that you were going to do that in advance, we would have told you not to bother. We don't, don't see you as a comedy writer. We see you as like a sort of political thriller, kind of murder mystery kind of writer. And I was like, well, I have written that, but that's not all I'm capable of. And that was a real kind of sticking point um, between us. And they said, you know, we don't have any comedy contacts so I, we don't really know what we're going to and I was like come on you work for the biggest agency in the country like you can do better than that yeah, and so actually right. the the script that that really kind of um clinched it with my new age that script in the end was that comedy drama script but really? I do genuinely feel like yeah like I could write pretty much anything with him and not only would he give me amazing feedback which my previous agents didn't do um um, but he wouldn't be like, oh my God, what are you writing that for? You know, I've put you in this box and that's what you write. So, you know, especially because you are both, you know, young and you've got all these years of a writing career ahead of you where you could be anything and write anything. You want to be with somebody who gets that, you know, you might be open to, to writing all different kinds of things and, and they need to be okay with that. Yeah, definitely. Because otherwise, why are you doing it? like like why because it's not easy you know what I mean like to just yeah be doing stuff that you don't want to be doing that they're pushing you to do yeah that I think that's really good advice Carla I just can't believe they said that to you <laughs> like oh it's it's appalling isn't it and it's gone honestly the stories I could tell you but I won't <laughs> because <laughs> it's great. but yeah it's um yeah, I think my biggest bit of advice for anybody would be just don't stay with someone who doesn't make you happy. And I think that's across the board in life. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, well, that's why I think that thing about it's like a marriage. It's like, yeah, it yeah. really is. Like, you do want to be able to trust that person and feel like you can't say, you know, you're not going to say something stupid and they're going to judge you for saying that stupid thing. I mean, I say yeah. stupid things all the time as I probably have on this as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are you know, when you have that, when you do take those meetings with agents, just remember that they're not just interviewing you, you're interviewing them, you know? Yeah, are that's they the biggest thing, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
he misses it. We could have done a whole work, another workshop on it. I know, it sorry. I was like, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> but it's been so useful. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. And thank you for coming and listening to me waffle on. <laughs> oh, Real. And I'll keep my eyes peeled for tails. And uh, yeah. if it's a second series, I'll, you know. I know. I'll be know. like, right, I've got people here. They know about dogs. <laughs> I don't want it. Literally my life. So, yeah. What's weird is that one of my closest friends is also a dog walker uh, oh in God. London. Oh, so, why and do I, I not know any dog walkers? <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? And we used to go on uh, on dog walks together around Highgate Cemetery, and we take about nine out at once. Can you imagine? Yeah. Just oh my God. Dogs? And it, it was yeah. amazing. It was such a joy. It's so, hilarious. Yeah, like, of course, it's been written as a book, you know. I hadn't even thought of like this is how ridiculous it was because I'm a performer and writer. So I just I just sort of went full in and I was like, oh my God, this is this is it. And like I, I was writing just based on what I was living through. Um, but it's a fairly it's new something. book. It's not like, you know, you're saying of course it has, but it you know, and I'm sure other things have been written, like <laughs> I'm sure they have. Yeah. But um <laughs> but this but this is a fairly new book. It's not like, you know Right. Yeah. Oh brilliant. And also yeah. just just because there is already a book about this subject doesn't mean you have to you know abandon what you're doing because you'll bring your own unique perspective and your voice to that project and so it could end up being a very very different really thing different. yeah exactly know. oh yeah i wouldn't say stop doing it at all oh yeah i've, I've definitely not take i'm gonna gonna keep that i mean just to have another sex group isn't it like what we yeah. were saying have another script that I can just pull out <laughs> well that's uh, the thing as well like it's never I don't think anything that you write is ever wasted because yeah, yeah even if but yeah keep going with it definitely yeah. all right well thank you guys um I'm hoping my children are in bed I'm gonna have a glass of wine <laughs> <laughs> the put the it. recording off before I say that <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you guys thanks, thanks so everyone much. Lovely have a great evening Bye. Bye. Bye.